Welcome back to the retrospective of the main Sonic the Hedgehog series. In the last two parts I talked about the Genesis error and then the Dreamcast and Gamecube error. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please do that first. In the meantime, let's finish this off by talking about the modern error. First beginning with oh no! <sighs> do I have to? <sighs> Fine. In 2006, they released the Blue Hedgehog's first leap into next gen, Sonic the Hedgehog, or Sonic Next Gen, or Sonic 06, whatever you feel like calling it. The story for this game is split up into three stories. The first one is Sonic's, whose story involves him rescuing the princess. No, 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 not that princess, this princess. Because Dr. Eggman is trying to capture her for our power to unleash something called. The Flames of Disaster? Once he saves her, she gets captured by Eggman again. So with the help of Tails and Knuckles, he goes on an adventure to save her. Okay, 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 okay. Enough of the references already. Anyway, Sonic's gameplay is quite reminiscent to the first Sonic Adventure game. Everything still has the usual platforming and other stuff that feels from Sonic Adventure. However, one new addition is the max speed levels, where Sonic is running at the speed of light, and you have to steer him to prevent him from being hit by various obstacles. There are also times when you are carrying the princess, and with this you can use her power to walk across quicksand, water, etc. They also burn back the snowboarding and hub worlds from Sonic Adventure. The only difference is the snowboarding handles like total garbage and the hub worlds aren't even as fun as before because they involve going around and talking to people to do numerous tasks. Sonic also has extra playable characters, Tails and Knuckles. Tails' gameplay to be honest has really dumbed down. I mean I really hated how he runs out of breath quickly and falls in mid flight because when he runs out of breath in Sonic Adventure he just glides down for a safe landing and Knuckles' gameplay isn't much fun either. Because his combat is really stiffy at times and he runs far too slow in this game. Then we have Shadow's story, which involves Shadow and Rouge breaking into Eggman's base and stealing the Scepter of Darkness? Anyway, that Scepter later on breaks by accident and releases a Shadow based creature called Mephilus. For Shadow's gameplay, it's just like Sonic's, except Shadow is more focused on action and combat as he can increase his chaos mode and make his attacks more powerful than Sonic's. Just like in Shadow the Hedgehog, he can ride numerous types of vehicles, and even though not all of them are great, they do at least add more usefulness to the series this time than before. Shadow's playable characters are Rouge and Omega. Rouge's gameplay is just like Knuckles, but is a little more balanced and fast paced, and Omega's gameplay is fairly decent as he can blow up stuff and glide, glide horizontally. And finally we have the new character, Silver the Hedgehog Story, whose story is set in a post-apocalyptic city in the future where he and Blaze the Cat travel back in time with Mephilus, where Mephilus tells Silver that in order for the future to be changed, he has to take out Sonic as he is known as... the Eblis Trigger? He will later meet up with Amy Rose who joins him into finding Sonic. Silver's gameplay here differs a lot. Unlike Sonic and Shadow who have the fast paced levels, Silver's levels are usually focused more on platforming. Silver also has telekinetic powers which he can use to stun enemies, pick them up and destroy them, create platforms for him to jump on, and much more. His playable characters include Blaze the Cat and Amy Rose. Blaze the Cat, I have to admit, is my favourite out of all the playable characters in this game, because her fire attacks can defeat enemies in a heartbeat, and she is the fastest character of the bunch. But Amy is just... USELESS! Seriously, I didn't mind her in Sonic Adventure because she did have her moments of enjoyable platforming, but here, what goodness does she offer? She's very slow, vulnerable, and is too slow to react. Jesus. With all honesty, I found the controls to be, while still playable, far too sensitive and could have used more work. Also, why hasn't the camera have been improved yet? Seriously, this issue started in Sonic Adventure, and I would have at least expected it to improve in the slightest, even on the next gen consoles. I was also disappointed with many of the playable characters' gameplay, mainly Tails, but I've already explained about that earlier. Another annoying feature are the max speed zones. Even though not all of them were frustrating, but when it came to Crisis City, it was just the pinnacle of frustration that this game offers. This level just throws too much crap at you, and you have to be precise as hell to even get good at this level. And to top it all down is the desert level with silver. I hated this level. I repeat, I LOATHED this level. Usually when I find a bad level, 
there's usually one redeeming good factor, but here, nope, there isn't. It's because of these stupid ball puzzles that take ages and ages to finish because the balls are put on a timer and you have to get them into the holes before they blow up. Also, the story. Well, it's not that the story doesn't fit a Sonic game that makes it bad. Oh no, it's because that the story takes itself far too seriously. Honestly, there's too much drama and too much complicatedness that it actually made me praise Kingdom Hearts' story, and that's saying a lot. Also, Silver's story didn't really seem exciting to me, and I didn't have that much emotion for Silver as other people do, even though he was just an okay character. And the whole Sonic X Elise thing, no comment. Just no comment. I would go more into depth about it, but since this is a retrospective, I'm kinda pressed for time. When the game was released, yeah, it got really bad reviews from critics, fans and gamers alike. Heck, Screw Attack gave it the place as the worst game of the decade, even beating out big rigs over the road racing. Well, all I have to say to that is, your winner. Even to this day, this game has been considered as one of the biggest video game letdowns in history. But things would probably get much better with the release of Sonic Unleashed. It's about Sonic typically trying to stop Eggman from another evil scheme. As Eggman tries to capture Sonic, he turns into Super Sonic and has Eggman begging for mercy. However, Eggman captures Sonic and transforms him into a werehog and unleashes a dark form called the Dark Gaia, which splits the Earth into pieces. After being sent back to Earth, he encounters a small chihuahua named Chip, who appeared to have lost his memory. Now Sonic and Chip have to sort out the Dark Gaia problem and bring the Earth back to place whilst trying to regain Chip's memory. The gameplay is split into three different types of gameplay. The first one is the daytime stages, where it has Sonic running at full speed and doing the usual point A to point B. However, this gameplay uses boost mechanics, which you can use to increase your speed when you have collected rings. It has its fair share of 2D running like the Genesis games, and also includes quick time events. All this makes Sonic gameplay in this game a blast to play, play through, and the levels also make it suitable to enjoy. Then there's the nighttime stages, that consist of Sonic as the Werehog and it involves action beat em up style of gameplay, platforming and even boss fights. I have to admit these levels are extremely mediocre. Whilst the platforming was decent, for the most part it's just brawling to fight through a crap, crap load of enemies, and it gets old and tiresome very quickly. Though I will admit I enjoyed it the first time I played this game, but then after that it just got very boring. And finally, there's the hub worlds, returning from Sonic Adventure and Sonic Next Gen. Even though these worlds lack exploration, they still don't drag the game on too long and can be finished quite quickly. Now getting to the day and night stages isn't always easy, as you'll have to find sun and moon medals in previous levels in order to unlock new ones, and these are really quite difficult to get. They also bring back the dogfight gameplay with Tails from Sonic Adventure. However, unlike before we had the freedom to shoot, here, it's just an annoying rhythm gameplay style, and we all know that I hate rhythm gameplay, but thankfully this doesn't mu happen much in the game. When the game was released, well, the critics and fans had mixed feelings towards it. The praise went to the daytime levels, and the negatives went to the nighttime levels. Even though I do agree that the Werehog was mediocre, if you can overlook it, you'll get the most out of this game when it comes to the daytime levels. I mean, heck, I still managed to go through the Werehog stages no matter how boring they were. So I would definitely say that this game was a breath of fresh air from Sonic Next Gen. Later in 2010, they released not one, not two, but three Sonic games. Since Sonic Free Riders is a spin-off, and I've never played that game, I will instead move on to Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1, the return to the classic Sonic gameplay from the Genesis days. This game pretty much brings back what we remembered from the Genesis games, but there are still some differences. For one, you can now choose which stage you want to go to instead of being forced to start a new game in order to get to a level that you really enjoyed. They also included Sonic's homing attack in the game, which makes it more handy to destroy enemies in the game. However, they still kept a few things from the Genesis games like the original Spin Dash ability, and some power-ups like the Bubble Shield and the Speed Shoes. The levels themselves also reminiscent of the Genesis games, particularly the Casino Night stage, and the way they played this level was just creative. That and the music still kept it true to the original games as well. The special stages are also back, and they play like the ones from the first Sonic game, but instead you have to rotate the level in order to get Sonic to the Chaos Emerald. Now when the game was released, 
Well, it didn't really get what I expected. Many critics and fans only gave it ok reviews, criticising many of the game's physics and that it lacked the charm of the Genesis games. Well, if I had any criticisms of the game myself, it would be the fact that it is way, way too short. Seriously, if you can overlook the special stages in this game, then you could pretty much finish this game within a day. One day! However, despite its short length, it was still a welcome addition to the main series, and I have hopes that episode 2 will be an improvement. However, things would definitely get intense with the release of Sonic Colors. The story is Dr. Eggman has created an amusement park in outer space. There, he uses the powers of an alien race called the Wisps to keep his park going. So now Sonic, with the help of Tails and one other Wisp, he must take down Eggman's theme park and rescue the Wisps. The gameplay basically takes the daytime levels from Sonic Unleashed, but this time incorporates more platforming, fast paced action and the new addition, the Wisp power ups. There, there's the white boost, which allows Sonic to get a good speed boost at any given time. There's the cyan laser, which turns Sonic into a laser and bounces him off solid surfaces. The yellow drill, which helps him drill through ground and water. The orange rocket, which blasts him off to higher places and so much more. Out of all the level designs in the 3D Sonic games, these are definitely the most creative. Each and every one of them offer frustrating but addicting platforming and it really showcases the game's creativity. My personal favourite will have to go to the Asteroid Coaster level, because it has a lot of challenging platforming and awesome level design, which just made the level so epic. If I had any complaints with the levels, it would have to be that they're too short and can be done quite quickly. However, this game also has red coins to collect in each level, which collecting a number of them unlocks bonus content, and the controls, whilst can be a little hard to get used to, are very smooth and don't require that much to get time to get used to. The game also has its fair share of frustrating moments, so it can be a difficult game at times. But aside from that, this was definitely the correct step for Sonic, and the reception? Oh boy, let me tell ya! Critics and fans gave it really positive reviews, and many gaming websites had nominated it for Best Platformer or even Best Game of 2010. Heck, even IGN nominated it as the Best Game of 2010, but it lost to Epic Mickey. Now, but that shouldn't be a surprise, since this game definitely offered a highly addicting experience. Maybe I made my top 15 3D platformers list too soon, because I think I would have replaced this game with Sonic Adventure 2, but I'll keep it as the way it is. But if you're any kind of Sonic fan, I would definitely recommend you to get this game if you are disappointed with the previous titles. In conclusion, the Sonic the Hedgehog series has been known today as the main reason why Sega is Nintendo's biggest rival in history, Sonic is still recognised as Mario's rival, and one of the most iconic video game characters of all time, has inspired many other video game companies to make similar 2D and 3D platformers, has many memorable and lovable characters, has gained a horrible yet gigantic fanbase to this day, and has still lasted this long for 20 years now. And so this year, we will definitely pick up Sonic Generations and definitely remember the Blue Blur's success in gaming. And also next year, Sega will release the second episode of Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Well, that was my own retrospective of the Sonic series. And to conclude this video, I will give you my personal top 10 favourite Sonic games of all time. So prepare yourselves, because this is going to go pretty fast. Here we go, number 10, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. A short but nostalgic treat. Number 9, Sonic CD. Frustrating but enjoyable. Number 8, Sonic and Knuckles. Playing as Knuckles for the first time in this game was definitely fun. Number 7, Sonic Unleashed. If you can look past the Werehog stages, this game will be a blast. Number 6, Sonic Adventure. Like I said, the Super Mario 64 of the entire franchise. Number 5, Sonic Adventure 2. An already addicting sequel. Number 4, Sonic Colors. The pinnacle of all 3D Sonic games. Number 3, Sonic the Hedgehog. For Sonic's first appearance, it still holds up as one of the best classics. Number 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. One of the best video game sequels ever. And number 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This game really made me admire the Sonic series even more with its music, levels, gameplay and new additions. Well, that's all I have to say dudes, I hope you all enjoyed this retrospective, and I'll see you all in the next video.